why I'm a little bit mad at God. I mean, it's a good thing, but uh, not to be mad at God, but why am I? Yesterday was an extremely long day, getting up early and getting ready for our communal Lent and reconciliation service, uh, which was awesome. It was amazing. Any, anybody there? I just want to hear some feedback from one or two people. What was that for you, that communal reconciliation service? Wonderful. Anything else? Forgiving. Forgiving and powerful. Okay. I want to encourage us all, all of us, to enter into the sacramental life of the church more. We were there together yesterday receiving absolution. Absolutely. When is the last time you've experienced absolution in the sacrament of reconciliation? It's one of the greatest things we've got going for us as Catholics, brothers and sisters. To be absolutely forgiven that God is absolving us from our sin. He's solving our problems of joylessness and guilt. And He's filling us with joy. There were 250 sinners here yesterday receiving absolution. And it was an absolutely beautiful experience. We had a priest here sharing about what the sacrament of reconciliation is to them and how it's touched them in their lives. So I encourage you, in the future when we have that, it's a beautiful time to come together and experience absolution. We do not sin alone. We do not cry alone. We do not live alone. We do not suffer alone. We come together to experience God's solving of our problems, the solve of His forgiveness, the balm that sets us free in the sacrament of reconciliation. And Satan's going to do everything he can to keep you away from the sacrament. God wants to set us free. And he might be reticent. He might say, no, that's, you know, there's no power. There's power there. So don't let Satan keep you away from absolution. Because God wants us to have an absolute experience of Christ. Not a half-baked love. Not a superficial love. Not a wishy-washy love. But Christ in the sacrament of reconciliation. It's so beautiful. Please try to believe in that. And come to absolution. Absolute experience of Christ. Face to face forgiving sinners. And they sang. They danced. They had a jubilee. They sang. They danced. They had a jubilee. And that's what our lives should be about. Experiencing that. It's grace. We just simply came up in line and people received grace all in upon grace. So that's how I would describe yesterday. So I was up early in the morning preparing for that and had a couple of marriage preps in the afternoon and confession and mass and then out to the confirmation student. So it's like a 15-hour day and I go, oh good, I'm ready for a good night's sleep. God wakes me up like at 3.10 in the morning. I've been up since then. Mm-hmm. And why I'm mad at God is because of His grace. <laughs> <laughs> when you have His grace, you can't sleep. And that's the whole homily in itself. I just can't sleep. And it always happens around Easter for me. It's even happening earlier this year and more and more often. Getting up in the middle of the night and saying, God, I just want to get kind of tired physically. But His life is so much in us and so much for us. Absolution. That you can't sleep in His presence. It's just hard to sleep in His presence because He's life. And that's what I'm experiencing. And then uh, I just want to share with you too that uh, I was at another reconciliation service the other night and someone came up and said, well, my sin, Father John, is I have not paid you for your book yet. <laughs>
How did he do that? How did he do that? How do we do that? And in our second reading today, we read about the humility of Christ. And a couple of verses before the verses that we read today gives us answer on how we're supposed to take this cup of suffering that we have in our lives with Jesus. It says, have the same attitude as Christ. So we look to Christ to see what attitude Christ has. And I just want to invite us to enter more fully into the attitude of Christ, particularly by entering into the Holy Week services. Holy Thursday, 7 o'clock, Good Friday service, 7 p.m., and Holy Saturday, 7.30 p.m., Easter Sunday, 8 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. I want to specifically look at the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. How can we take on the attitude of Christ in Holy Thursday? Holy Thursday can be termed as what we can learn from that is humble service. Jesus in his humble service washing the disciples' feet. So as Jesus is approaching his death, isn't Jesus amazing? He is taking on all the suffering in the world. And what is he doing? He's serving. He's washing our feet. I have a good friend who's a deacon. I was just talking to him a couple months ago. I go, what's going on, Steve? He goes, I just can't can't get over it. God gets on his knees and he washes our feet. Jesus is about ready to die. And who's he thinking about? You. That attitude of humble service. Joy. Jesus over you. Jesus over yourself. You're dying. Joy. The other person before yourself is Jesus shows us He's dying and He's washing our feet. Thinking about us. I was with a dying man this week and I was spending time with him holding his hand. He's dying. Held his hand for about 15 or 20 minutes. And as I held his hand, he was caressing my hand. And that reminded me of Jesus. He's dying and He's serving me. And He's anointing me with His death in serving me. So, in when we have to drink our cup of suffering, to think of that is, let us continue to be humble servants to all those around us, to anoint those around us in the likeness of Jesus. Good Friday, a word that we can use to characterize Good Friday is courage. The courage of Jesus. Coraggio. The courage of Jesus. That He will continue to follow His God. Even in the midst, my God, says, why have you forsaken me? And his experience of not experiencing God, he's not feeling it. But his courage to continue to follow God when he's not feeling it. Brothers and sisters, our faith is not about feelings. It's about the fact of Jesus and what he does for those who love him. Because a lot of times we aren't feeling it. But we have faith in the fact of who Jesus is for us and what He has done for us. Coraggio on Friday as He faces it. And then on Saturday, Holy Saturday, He's in the tomb waiting to be raised. And we can call this a day of trust. In Jesus, what He shows us in as a man, as us being human beings in our eternal helplessness our eternal helplessness we trust in the one who is eternally helpful what he will do for us so we approach this cup of suffering we approach this life we serve to have courage in our God in the fact of our God and to trust in what he will do for us what does Jesus Christ do for his friends? He raises his friends from the dead. <laughs>